Hi gang, Larry Bailey here with Mastery Encompass. And what if I told you that most of what happens in Encompass is the fault of the persona? Now, you might challenge me with that and say, no, there's lots of other settings inside of Encompass that create so many different problems and complexities. And I'm gonna tell you, it starts with a persona and I'm gonna tell you why. So let's get over and check out what the persona is all about anyway. So what you see on screen is all the tabs inside of the Encompass platform with regards to the persona setting. Now just off screen, there's a sentence right up here at the top that a lot of people miss and it basically says, what is a persona? A persona is a list of job functions in your company, specifically in your workflow. So said plainly, if you have a bunch of personas, you can see on the screen here, we have a lot of different personas. Reality is you probably don't have that many different job functions in, a, in an average or normal sized company. It's just the way it runs. But what ends up happening is companies end up creating too many complexities with regard to their personas. They end up creating overlap situations and that leads to other problems in the Encompass platform, which is why when I go through a settings review of the Encompass platform, I help identify these kinds of problems and give you real life solutions for what you should do about it. Now, each one of these personas should have its own unique set of job functions. So as an example, when we have a closer and we have a closing manager and we have a closing coordinator, as long as they're all doing uniquely independent job functions, it makes sense. So how do we determine that? What is it that really sets one persona apart from another? The very first tab that defines that is the pipeline tab. So in the pipeline tab, what we're really talking about is what can this persona do in this encompass that is unique from anything else? One of the things that you could work on is pipeline views. Now it's very common for different personas to have their different kinds of pipeline views because that's where the data needs to be visualized by the team member that has that persona assigned. You also might want to hide different fields from this persona uh, from being able to be shown on a pipeline view, a dashboard or a report. But most importantly on the pipeline itself, what the user account can do based upon their persona is defined here in these pipeline tasks area. So when it comes to working with delivering loans to GSEs or deciding um, what they're allowed to do in terms of duplicating loans or moving loans, things like that, especially when it comes to Humda reporting or last but not least, working with administrative services or transferring loans over, um, all of this stuff is well-defined. More recently, of course, Encompass was given the update to where you can define which personas can access archive loans or archive folders is down here at the bottom of the pipeline tab in each persona. So that's really great from the pipeline tab. Once you go in the loan file, of course, it again can be very different. So whether or not a persona can use the accept or return buttons on the milestone worksheets, whether or not they can finish milestones or assign specific loan team members on specific milestones. How do they interact on the 2015 itemization? What kind of functionality can they use when they're printing? And over here on the right, what can they do with regards to borrower management or managing service providers on the desktop version of the service provider list? Down here in the bottom right, if they're able to produce closing packages and closing documents, what part of that are they allowed to do? These are all things that are happening inside the loan file in terms of parts that the, that the persona is allowed to do, therefore assigned to that user account for what they are allowed to do. Now, when it comes to which input forms or which tools, that's on the forms tools tab. So every single input form is going to be on the left, both standard input forms and custom input forms. Having a checkbox next to them indicates they can see them. Remember, this is only the desktop version. Over on the right, you've got all the tools. Again, tools tab on the desktop version. Anything with a check mark means that they can access that tool at the persona level. When we come over into the e-folder, what we're seeing here is you've got some general settings with regards to the documents and the files. We've got the file manager for over here for what can the persona do. Now, most companies do not use a protected document workflow. 
Um, this is an ideal solution of how this should be uh, checked off. If you're not using a protected document workflow, make sure you, you address what to do with your unprotected versus your protected documents. And then of course, down here in the bottom of the conditions tab, knowing should this persona be able to access underwriting conditions or post-closing or delivery, what's really important is this is specifically focused in on making sure you have the conditions being available in the loan file for that persona, also team member that's given that persona assignment, what can they do with those conditions? And these are the standard conditions. As a reminder, when we get over into enhanced conditions, if you're using enhanced conditions, that's on its own tab in the, in the persona. So here's what you want to make sure. All of these condition types, of course, are well-defined in your enhanced condition administrative setting. If you make any changes there, of course, you gotta remember to come back in here and update those. So another layer in the persona that you've got to make sure you're managing properly. Trades tab and the contacts tab and dashboards and reports are all managed for each persona in this tab, making sure that you know exactly what's going on with each of those sections and each of those tabs. Naturally, you want to make sure that you address your user groups for things like public business contact groups, as well as reports being served up through your user groups, as well as dashboards. All this is very important to know how it works because each persona can have its own setting for these. And when you introduce complexities with user groups, things can get a little bit interesting if you don't exactly know what you're doing. But that's okay. If you're with the Mastering and Compass for Administrators course, you're learning all about how to use this throughout that training. On the Settings tab, this is where you can actually give a persona the ability to administer these settings directly. And then down here in the bottom left, this is where you can give them access to the Input Form Builder, as well as the diagnostic mode for support issues when you're managing with ICE Mortgage Technology or to trying to discover training uh, opportunities with regards to um, what's happening inside the loan file itself. External settings, this is where you're allowing the persona to be able to manage the external settings if you're working with a TPO channel um, as opposed to, to desktop settings in here. So you would give them that uh, opportunity there. If you have TPO Connect enabled on your environment, you're going to use this tab to give persona rights uh, with regards to the TPO Connect administration in here. If you're using Consumer Connect, this is where you can define if you allow this persona to administer your uh, Consumer Connect web area or the content within the web or do borrower lookup functions within Web Assistant. eVault, if you're doing e-closings, this is where you're going to come in, into the persona. Um, to manage the eVault settings. We come over to web version. So this is all about Encompass Web and this continues to mature after every major release that ICE Mortgage Technology pushes out for the Encompass platform. So where we saw desktop forms and tools, you've got now web forms and tools. Where we see any type of custom tools, things like that, even the standard uh, Encompass web forms over here, then of course you've got things over here that are standard features such as workflow tools or services. And then last but not least here at the bottom, where do you want your persona user to land when they go to and log into Encompass Web? Do they land on the pipeline or do they land on the task pipeline? That's up to you to decide. Rounding out here, we've got the data and documents automation and mortgage analyzers. So if you're using these products on the ICE Mortgage Technology platform for Encompass, you'd want to go ahead and enable these within the persona that should have access to these services and solutions. And last but not least, if you are uh, creating a persona specifically to subscribe to webhooks or enhanced field change, you want to go to the Developer Connect tab to control all of that. And keep in mind, all of these tabs, all of these settings, all of these choices, you have to then replicate in all of these personas. Gang, maintenance is everything inside of Encompass. So one of the things that I try to teach um, in the Mastery Encompass for admins course is always think in terms of maintenance. Everything that you create is not going to disappear tomorrow. You have to make sure it stays in force. And as a user, if you're going through Encompass and you're not able to do certain things with Encompass that you know are things that you have to do, 
Don't take shortcuts. Reach out to your Encompass admin team. Make sure they understand what it is that you need to do. And if you're a manager and you need to have things change, hopefully this has given you an idea of everything that's possible throughout the Encompass platform just for the persona settings. We'll be releasing a lot of these different videos of how things work in Encompass so that you understand from an insider and an administrative point of view so you see what's going on the back end. My name's Larry Bailey. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for other videos and go ahead and subscribe and uh, like what this video and subscribe to our channel if you want to see more. Thank you.